Welcome back to the show. I'm Natalie Brunel, and joining me this week is Ian Major. He is the co-founder of Jolts, which creates a Bitcoin rewards tool so that companies can start rewarding people with what else? What do you want? Satoshis, right? You want to stack more Satoshis. Really excited to learn a little bit more about this, but what's actually really fascinating about Ian is he's done a lot of research into the inflation of rewards points in the fiat world. You know, those rewards miles, the hotel points that you might be earning. I'm someone that's like a Marriott Bonvoy member and I have a bunch of points and I keep waiting to spend them, but maybe that's not such a good idea. So Ian, thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Natalie, thanks so much for having me on. Big uh, fan and appreciate all the work you do. So excited for our discussion today. Well, thank you so much. Let's get a little bit of your backstory first. Can you um, tell us your Bitcoin journey and, and why you created, helped create Jolts about a year ago? Yeah, absolutely. So in the in the pre-Bitcoin era, it feels so, so long ago, um, I worked as a consultant for a number of years. We had a software as a service platform where we did analytics for a lot of big companies um, and a big part of that was looking at their loyalty programs, helping them figure out what was going well, what was not going well. Um, and one of the sort of scary things we found is that over half, you know, probably closer to two thirds of loyalty programs weren't actually breaking even for the businesses. They weren't getting a positive return from them. And if you peeled the onion back, you could sort of see two main consumer pain points that explained why some programs were doing not so well. One is around value. Uh, I, I probably can imagine most of the listeners uh, can intuit that points are kind of a bit of a scam, right? Like points being this derivative of fiat, which in turn is a scam. It would logically follow that points are a scam and we can get into some of the math, right? Which a lot of people have that intuition, but haven't really gone through the actual numbers. Um, the second really key pain point is around flexibility. So um, I have all these little silos of loyalty value, my miles, my points, whatever. They don't really talk to each other. I can't really easily exchange one form of value for another. Uh, and so that, that is another big pain point. And so our thesis was, as the meme goes, like Bitcoin fixes this, right? Bitcoin, the asset, of course, maps really well to that value pain point. And then Bitcoin, the network, in a similar way as to how, you know, we've heard people like Jack Mallers espouse the merits of the Lightning Network as this open interoperable network for intermediating cross-border payments and fiat currencies, just replace the fiat currencies in that example with these different forms of loyalty value. And you can start to see this more open loyalty paradigm that gives the consumer a lot more optionality uh, that could be built on Bitcoin as well. So uh, that was the sort of uh, hunch. Um, I had gone down the rabbit hole you know, pretty deeply um, and left my, left my corporate job in 2021 sort of noodled a bit on, on what we wanted Jolts to be and uh, ultimately launched uh, early last year. And how long have you been a Bitcoiner? What's your backstory before that? Yeah, so 2016, 17, uh, I was one of, you know, got into the space. And uh, I mean, my first exposure was back in 2013. I had a classmate coming in sweating every day because he was day trading Bitcoin. And so that was unfortunately my first uh, exposure. I was like, oh, it's this, you know, gambling thing. Um, fast forward to the 2017 cycle. And, you know, I had a diversified portfolio of crypto assets and sort of, you know, wrote it up, wrote it down and left that thinking there has to be something here, right? There has to be something uh, that I'm, I'm missing. And that's something, of course, is, is the fact that, you know, Bitcoin really is this special, unique thing that has properties that cannot and are not going to be replicated. Um, and so that kind of, you know, spiraled uh, down the rabbit hole through which I've been happily tumbling since. Coin Stories is brought to you by BitDeer, where the power of Bitcoin mining is at your fingertips. As a publicly traded leader, BitDeer's global reach and scale means they're everywhere you need them to be, ensuring you're part of the thriving Bitcoin economy. BitDeer's not just mining, they are industry pioneers, and BitDeer stands alone as the only vertically integrated, technology-focused Bitcoin mining company. What does that mean? Well, they're not just deploying, but developing the latest tech to make Bitcoin mining more efficient and effective. With the industry's most experienced leadership team, innovation is in their DNA, and it shows with a quarter of their workforce dedicated to research and development, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in Bitcoin mining. Now they're leveraging years of expertise in data center and cloud management into high-performance computing through a recently announced partnership with NVIDIA. Join BitDeer in reshaping the world of Bitcoin mining. Learn more at bitdeer.com and explore how they are pioneering the future today. Well, I can't wait to dig into um, some of your research because 
rewards points, I feel like there's such an incentive, right? Even to open up a credit card. I have literally opened up credit cards because I was promised 100,000 points, which equate to, I don't know, a certain type of airplane ticket or, or what have you. And, and here I am, and I've actually noticed that when you look at booking, let's say a room, what used to cost like 10,000 points, all of a sudden is like 35,000 points. And so can you talk a little bit about some some of what you've found in that? Because essentially for these companies, it doesn't cost them anything to print these. They're almost like altcoins or, you know, the S coin yeah. word. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, It's totally, you know, it costs them nothing. And so they can print, print, print more rewards points, right? So yeah. what what have you found? Yeah, it's, it's pretty astonishing. I mean, not only can they obviously print more of these, they can also do what are effectively overnight debasements. They could simply say, hey, as of tomorrow, your points are worth half less in terms of the goods and services you can redeem them for. Um, and as you said, I think, and as we said earlier, a lot of people can probably intuit that this is happening, but they haven't really done the math. And so, you know, we have a, a couple just examples, right? Um, these are huge programs. You know, think of the, uh, you know, city points um, for American Airlines, um, once worth $1.66. And we can see some of those examples here in the slide. Uh, that's now worth a cent, right? So these are huge devalue depreciation numbers. Uh, Hyatt Hotels, one of the biggest hotel chains, um, they've increased recently the cost um, for some of their most popular destinations uh, to the tune of about 33% depreciation. Delta, right? Major airlines. I mean, Emirates, you know, goes on this list. This is just a small subset. Starbucks, arguably, you know, the leading or one of the leading uh, mainstream consumer loyalty programs on planet Earth. They doubled the number of Starbucks stars that were required to redeem a free cup of coffee. This happened early last year. Uh, and so, you know, even even mighty Starbucks is not immune from this. And one of the really interesting things to think about is, you know, these businesses, they're not like, you know, they're not evil things. They're not sort of out to get you necessarily. They face a lot of the same fiat inflationary cost pressures that we do as individuals. And you better believe that it is a lot easier for these businesses to devalue their points, which sits as a liability on their balance sheet. So they can overnight sort of wave their magic wand and reduce the amount of liability on their balance sheet. Like that's a pretty, you know, great superpower if you're that business. Um, but of course that leads to loyalty programs failing to meet the reason that they were designed in the first place, which is to actually get you to come back and drive those incremental purchases that otherwise wouldn't have happened if you hadn't had uh, the loyalty program. So it's it's pretty remarkable to see just how high some of these numbers are. All of these numbers that you're seeing here in these couple of examples uh, are from the last year or two, um, and there's a lot of a, a lot more uh, beyond that. If we tried to put some sort of overarching number to all of this, there's hundreds of billions, probably at this point, close to half a trillion dollars worth of value sloshing around these different units wow. of loyalty, uh, per, you know, points, miles, et cetera, globally. And so if we just conservatively take like a 20% depreciation rate, you know, it's, it's tens of billions of dollars that consumers are losing in purchasing power just from loyalty points, right? Uh, you know, let alone the melting, you know, fiat uh, ice cube in their, in their checking account. So it, it really is quite a big pool of economic activity. And I just don't think a lot of people recognize just how, um, you know, just how high some of these numbers are. Yeah, this is fascinating. So basically, you know, years ago, you could have gotten 33% more in terms of a hotel room or 26% more in terms of flights. So it's actually, you should spend it or you're going to lose it pretty soon. 1 million points will be not even worth one flight. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the Bitcoin solution for this. Why aren't more companies offering Satoshis or something. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to be partnered with FoldUp. I actually still use it. So I've been earning uh, rewards points in the form of sats for some of my purchases. But why don't we see this? And and how does Jolts kind of fit into the picture? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, Bitcoin rewards is not a, certainly not a new concept. You've got Fold, you've got Lolly, you've got other types of models and other geographies as well. And really, these are kind of um, largely B2C solutions in that you know, there's these, this captive audience of Bitcoiners that wants to stack sats. And so what these companies are able to do is essentially have that audience and be able to share some sort of revenue stream that they're getting 
with their users in the form of Bitcoin. And that works really well. Our big hypothesis is that um, businesses themselves will appreciate having the ability to bring some of these re rewards internally into their apps, into their you know websites, into their physical stores even. And so um, I think it's just a matter of time as we look at the arc of Bitcoin adoption. One of the very common um, reasons that a business might say, whoa, 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 wait a second. And some of the listeners and audience here may come to the same uh, question is, well, wait a second, like all these businesses are on a fiat standard. So they probably appreciate the ability to have this lever where they can just wave a magic wand and reduce the size of the liability on their balance sheet. And that's true, but is sort of first, you know, kind of first derivative thinking. Like the whole point, again, of a loyalty program is to drive incremental purchases. And if you're, if you're eroding the very purchasing power from which that next purchase is supposed to come, you're ending up in a situation where you're less likely to get that next purchase versus the opposite. Of course, there's volatility in Bitcoin. We all know that. But over a longer period of time, Bitcoin has proven immensely capable of preserving and even increasing purchasing power. Yeah. So let's take a simple example, right? Imagine earning $10 worth of, of points, right? Um, where the, uh, from an accounting standpoint, that sits on the company's balance sheet. That $10 is not yet recognized as revenue for them. Now, let's say that uh, it was actually, you know, SATs um, or, you know, some sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, token that kind of tracks Bitcoin, right? Let's say it goes to $15 um, in value. When I go to redeem those points, that business is recognizing $15 worth of revenue, not the $10 that they otherwise would have recognized, um, or potentially even less than that if you know the, 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 the wow. US dollar value, denominated value, goes down. So it should be a win-win. Not only yeah. are you giving consumers more purchasing power that makes it more likely that the business is going to get that next purchase, um, but the business is going to benefit from that as well not least of which through new customer acquisition by being an early adopter of some of this stuff. Um, and we're certainly not, ad, you know, we're not, we're not inviting businesses to completely throw out all their program and wholesale replace it only with Bitcoin, but at least start to introduce the option yeah. for those who want this to opt in. It could be a huge win-win. It's time for a quick break to hear these messages from my partners who make this podcast possible. First up, Bitcoin 2024, the world's largest Bitcoin conference, is coming to Nashville this July. Join us for three amazing days of keynotes, panels, networking events, workshops, concerts, and my third annual Women of Bitcoin brunch. The Bitcoin conference is actually where I launched my podcast almost three years ago. You never know what can happen or who you can meet here. Head to b.tc slash conference and use the code HODL, H-O-D-L, for 10% off. Next up, CoinKite. CoinKite makes everything you need to safely self-custody your Bitcoin, including the cold card wallet, the cold storage device I use for safekeeping my Bitcoin. You can verify the source code, it's ultra secure, and it's easy to use even if you're a beginner. Head to their site in my show notes and get a 5% discount with promo code COINSTORIES. And finally, the why of Bitcoin is easy to grasp, but the how can be so confusing. The Bitcoin way is your professional Bitcoin IT and security team that offers personalized one-on-one -on -one support to guide you through cold storage, setting up a node, inheritance planning, privacy best practices, and more. Don't take my word for it. Take 82-year-old customer bills. Give the Bitcoin way a try. You will be well on your way to owning and protecting the greatest money ever discovered. Set up your free 30-minute consultation with the Bitcoin way today. All right, back to the show. Yeah, this is super cool. So you have depreciating loyalty points, but appreciating Satoshis. So you'll get more for your money the longer you hold it as opposed to the opposite. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about, I, I feel like I've heard about these types of loyalty programs being replaced with other blockchains. Like people literally want to create other tokens for, for these purposes and use them for, you know, game tickets and sporting okay. things. Um, can you talk about why maybe Bitcoin's better? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. It's well, it's one of these things that, um, you know, there's the shiny, attractive allure of, oh, you know, Bitcoin, it's this stodgy MySpace of crypto. And um, it, interestingly, like that is increasingly not the case on multiple levels. Number one, you know, if you're introducing some, you know, alternative token that 
um, that that is just a, a sort of random thing you're introducing. I really haven't seen any kind of compelling mechanic that suggests why that is necessary in the context of loyalty. Bitcoin is already this sort of universal token of value, um, mm-hmm. right? It's cross-border, it's borderless, it's neutral, it's it's all of these things. And so you're going to give people more value if you're focusing on the thing that already has proven its value, already has this incredible network effect. And I'll, I'll offer one maybe more provocative sort of take on this as well. Um, you know, at Jolts in particular, as we now start to bring on non-Bitcoin companies, um, there's this big challenge around how do you introduce this to uh, folks who are pre-coiners, no-coiners, that know nothing about Bitcoin. And so one version, one approach is like that opt-in uh, that we kind of discussed earlier. Um, and we have a, a customer, um, Cravable, that's a meal delivery service that's, that's adopting that approach. But another approach, and again, some people are going to need your sort of allergically vomit to what I'm about to say, but you could have some sort of fungible taproot asset. Taproot asset protocol is a protocol built by Lightning Labs um, yeah. where the brand retains the branding. This is really important. Yeah. Like Starbucks is never going to give up its Starbucks star. Hyatt is never going to give it up. Hilton's never going to give it up. They yeah. need to have the branding attached to, uh, att- attached to this unit of value. And so what you could have is a fungible taproot asset, a branded loyalty token. I, I know. Yeah. Um, but have it be some sort of wrapped sats, meaning that it's backed by Bitcoin. And so the value of that token doesn't have any independent value on a, you know, you couldn't go and sell it on a marketplace, right. but you could convert it into Bitcoin. And it just becomes a much easier way to introduce people because it looks like they're earning mm-hmm. a normal thing. It's kind of like a reverse rug pull. It's like, actually, you have sats underneath that. So those are some of the... Um, really direct ways that like Bitcoin and some of the emerging ways we have to support these different use cases um, can accommodate everything that we want to do in this loyalty realm and particularly make it easier for some more mainstream businesses uh, to adopt this in the first place. That's really interesting because I I would envision that Starbucks or any of these big companies would be like, oh, we're just going to put the points on the blockchain. Yippee, yeah. we're, we're progressive. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how maybe this will encourage Bitcoin as more of a medium of exchange where people are spending more circular economies, because I do think um, a lot of people are just storing it, right? Especially here yeah. in the West, we're using it as our savings technology, which is fantastic. Uh, but why maybe should Bitcoin be used more as a medium of exchange where we're, we're spending it? Yeah, uh, I'm glad you asked, and it's very timely. We didn't even plan this, but um, I'm down here in Costa Rica currently in uh, Uvita, or B- Bitcoin jungle, so the sort of circular economy down here in, in Costa Rica, and um, I was participating in the Bitcoin Freedom Festival that they, that they had, and also just sort of seeing the circular economy here, and like it's the real deal. I think there's over 200 merchants um, in the local community that accept Bitcoin, restaurants, hotels, farmer's market, et cetera. And, um, you know, I gave a, I gave a talk on, on that very topic, like rewards and how they could facilitate these circular economies. And I had a local businessman who owns a hotel and, um, restaurant come up to me afterwards. He was like, I've been talking about rewards. Like I want rewards. I've been accepting Bitcoin for a long time, but what about all the people who don't have Bitcoin, who don't have the disposable income to go out and buy it? Uh, or, you know, easily, you know, on ramp to it. I will say the Bitcoin Jungle app is very good in that regards. But um, there's a lot of people still who don't have those first sats. And so if you can give them their, uh, the ability to earn that for their loyalty and they can accumulate a small position, that now gives them the ability to pay for things in Bitcoin. Um, and so that's a beautiful thing. We're also seeing potential cases in which maybe that's actually the stepping stone for a merchant to accept Bitcoin as payments. Um, you know, we've, we've talked to businesses who are like, mm, yeah, we sort of see Bitcoin, but um, I don't know. We're not ready yet to, to accept it as payment. Hey, that's okay. Why don't you implement some sort of a rewards program where we're taking care of everything for you and then you can actually see the power and see the value that your consumers get. Um, and now that they're earning this thing, they want to spend it back with you, right? And so now that becomes a conduit through which these merchants can start accepting Bitcoin payments. So it can work on both sides of that circular economy, either in bringing people onto Bitcoin, uh, onto the life raft for the very first time, who wouldn't otherwise 
right? They're, you know, not going, opening an account on the exchange. They're not, you know, going on a peer to peer platform like this. Like, you know, they're otherwise not going to get SATs. And then for merchants as well, it can be a, a, a really nice way to um, get them introduced to Bitcoin too. That is really interesting. Yeah. I mean, incentives drive outcomes. And it is, yes. it's crazy to think about that, the fact that these loyalty programs do work. I mean, the more that you spend at a certain company, right? You're like, oh, I'm going to earn a certain status. And that has certainly been the case for me. Um, some of you guys know this. I was a news reporter before I traveled a lot for one of my old network correspondent jobs. So I was racking up hotel points and they always put us in Marriott. So I have like a million Marriott points. And it's funny because I was like, oh, I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll save it for later and I'll, I'll use it on a nicer trip. But I haven't realized that that inflation, that debasement has really happened. And now I, I actually should have spent it. Um, yeah. Do you think that I'll be able to maybe one day convert these points or miles to Satoshi's through a program like yours? Certainly our hope. You know, we, we obviously, uh, as an early stage company, we have to crawl before we walk, before we run. But yeah. I do think it's only a matter of time, right? You know, you look at the arc of loyalty over the last, you know, decade or two. Yeah. While there are hesitations with these new things from businesses, consumer preferences ultimately win out, right? And so it, I think it's a question of when, not if, uh, but we certainly hope to uh, certainly hope to power such a solution for you uh, before too long. Yeah, I mean, I'm over a million points. It's a lot. Like, it's a lot. I got to spend that on something. All right. You do. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Ian. Uh, any final thoughts before we leave the audience? No, I would just, you know, invite people to even think about as you're orange pilling businesses in your local area or orange pilling, you know, others, right? Rewards is a really, really powerful tool. You know, it's not just like you're airdropping this on people, like they're earning it. They're doing something to earn uh, these sats. And that, as we know, can kick off this wonderful flywheel. You earn some sats. You want to learn more about what you've just gotten some skin in the game for. The more you learn, the more you want to accumulate, the more you want to use it. And it's this beautiful sort of cycle. So I really see, you know, re rewards are kind of just like, oh, well, we've done that. But I think it's we're in the early, early innings for how rewards are going to be integrated in all sorts of different business environments and systems. Um, and so if there are business owners out there listening to this who are interested, um, definitely check us out. Uh, JoltsRewards.com. Um, we've got all sorts of integrations and tools for businesses to bring these exciting new reward types into your uh, into your businesses. And. Um, we've seen some really great impact from our customers so far, but uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to to talk a little bit about the, the the scam that is loyalty points today. Sure, no, it's been awesome hearing about this, and I'm excited about all the new merchants that are onboarding. I uh, I'm an advisor for Orange Pill app, and we just launched yes. a feature that yes. talks about where you can shop in your local area that that has Bitcoiners essentially and supporting them. So thanks so much, Ian. All the information is in the show notes, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much, Natalie. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Coin Stories. If you want to connect more, make sure to check out this podcast on the Fountain app. It brings creators like me closer to the global community of listeners, and it's all powered by Bitcoin. You can share the best moments of this podcast and stream stats directly to your favorite podcast hosts. And you get paid when other listeners like your clips, comments, or playlists, or just for being a regular listener. Get rewarded for helping build this incredible community. Download the Fountain app today and subscribe to Coin Stories. This show is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Nothing should constitute as official investment advice, and you should always do your own research. My inbox is open if you want to share feedback or guest suggestions. Just reach out at natalie at talkingbitcoin.com. I'll see you next time.